So let's look at this whole notion that somehow we can determine the the character or, or even the nature of uh, society uh, by uh, the uh, treatment of Brittany Griner in particular. There's another person who was involved uh, in this process, a Russian, uh, who the Wall Street Journal said is suspected of being an arms dealer. And he was freed from United States prison uh, and was, uh, was uh, sent back to Russia as part of this, this prisoner swap. Uh, uh, that brought Griner back to this country. But let's look at uh, what the situation is. If we are going to measure uh, the character and the nature of the country based on the treatment of Griner uh, as an African person, and as far as I know, by the way, uh, as an aside, Brittany Griner is the only African in prison in Russia uh, for marijuana or for anything. Um, if there are more people there, it certainly doesn't approach anything like what we see in the United States where one out of every eight human beings on earth who's locked up in prison uh, is an African in the United States. And where Africans just didn't deal with the issue of marijuana charges, which is what Griner was sentenced for, Africans are 3.6 times more likely than white people who are the colonizers to be arrested on marijuana charge. And if you look at the fact, of course, is that the United States has by far the largest uh, prison population per capita in the whole world. And that you look at uh, Louisiana, which has the second largest prison population per capita in the world, Louisiana, where 1,100 uh, per 100,000 people are in prison uh, in that state. And for Africans uh, who are in Louisiana, it's 2,800 in prison per 100,000. And of course, the most notorious prison in Louisiana is Angola, named for a place in Africa, which is a statement about the character and nature of the colonial power of the United States versus what we're looking at in Russia. The United States is only second to Louisiana in terms of per capita people who are locked up in prison at 664 uh, persons per 100,000. In Russia, Russia had uh, uh, 380 uh, people per 100,000 people in prison. In other words, Louisiana's rate of imp imprisonment per capita is three times higher than Russia's. And if you look at Louisiana, you're talking about most of them are Africans versus Russia. And if you look at the reality, uh, uh, Brittany uh, Griner, and we are all sympathetic with, uh, for Brittany Griner, this African woman, but in the United States, according to the United States Department of Justice report, uh, that the rate of incarceration for African women is 113 per 100,000, more than twice that of females at 51 per 100,000. So we look at Brittany Griner, we look at the conditions of African people and specifically of African women in the United States. So, and Biden is the one who is the cheerleader for the return of Brittany Griner to the United States, but Biden is also the person who is responsible for many of the people who we're talking about, Africans who are locked up in prison uh, for this crime bill of 1994 that he has even admitted uh, as responsible for this enhanced, uh, just growing numbers of African people shoved into prisons uh, throughout this country. And then of course, uh, this Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, which Biden is responsible for in 1994. And this bill reinforced the existing piece of legislation the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986, which created this huge disparities uh, in sentencing uh, between crack cocaine, which was something that was manufactured in the laboratory and put in African communities by the CIA. Uh, and anybody can, can learn about this now. You can Google this. It's uh, such a well-known fact. Uh, in fact, our slogan used to be in the African People's Socialist Party uh, that the White House, uh, that is the crack house, the rock house. And Uncle Sam is the pushing man. So uh, 1994, this Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act pushed by Biden and the police department reinforced this legislation that was called the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986, uh, which created this huge disparity uh, between people who are in prison uh, with this uh, crack cocaine derivative that was uh, this created specifically for African people and then uh, the white colonizer of uh, cocaine, uh, powder cocaine. 
And so under this bill that Biden's law helped to reinforce, a person uh, was sentenced to a five-year minimum sentence, a five-year minimum sentence for five grams of cocaine, of crack cocaine. But it took 500 grams of pilot cocaine, that is to say the majority colonizer white uh, drug, uh, took, it took 500 grams of pilot cocaine to trigger the same sentence. So this is uh, what we're looking at in terms of making these comparisons that the United States has asked us to make in terms of the treatment of African people by uh, the United States government, especially around drugs and things uh, of that nature, uh, democratic rights and, and uh, uh, by Russia. So uh, the fact is that uh, we are looking at a serious uh, crisis of the existing social system uh, domestically and uh, internationally. It's volatile. And that African people are growing desperate in our struggles for freedom. And the United States has positioned itself uh, as the leading democratic force, a shining city on the hill, with more people becoming disenchanted with the colonial mode of production and looking for alternatives to U.S. and colonial domination. Increasingly, it's increasingly important for the United States uh, to show that it is the model for democracy versus Russia and China who are making inroads into political and economic spaces once dominated by the United States.